I'm Chase Raz. This is the Zillica Observer, and this video is addressing when am I going to get my port? In fact, you may have been sent this video if you've been asking that question too many times around various different social media channels. What I want to do today is explain the whole process to you, let you know where we are as of mid to late April 2021, heading into May 2021, and when you might be able to expect your port. So let me say this to get started, that the port backlog is significantly large. It is still not clear. Uh, I think a few of us thought it was clear or clearing faster than it currently is, and that does not seem to be the case. So what we want to do is walk through some of the reasons for this, where they're at, what's going on, and get to some type of answer that we can utilize. So I will say this, I was absolutely privileged to get several hours with the powers that be over at Package Portal this week to try to really understand this problem and, and understand what's going on um, to discuss some strategies for how it's communicated, including for my own video right here. And what I'll say is that I'm not going to necessarily address how we got into this situation only where we are now, and you can intuit, by the way, you can intuit most of how we got here based on what I'm gonna say today. So when Package Portal did a recent app update, many people were locked out of the application. Package Portal indicated that this was a necessity and they are aware that it's going to take some time to correct. It's frustrating. I was locked out, many of you are locked out, Folks at Package Portal, some of their family was locked out. They knew this was something that might happen. They could not announce it for reasons you're going to see in just a moment. It's very good that they didn't announce. What happened uh, to really make this an unfortunate situation was there was some code in the update that happened that wasn't ideal and didn't let the security updates that were taking place you know, we were all locked out temporarily. Nobody could log in. And then for many of us who were locked out, it's because then our accounts automatically linked with uh, Google or with Apple. And I think there are still some issues on the Apple side of, of the house with the Apple code. But that's, you know, that's being worked through as fast as, as possible. What I, what I also will say here, based on the conversation with JG at Package Portal, is that He's fully aware that people are mad about this and the best way to go about triaging the situation, if you will, is to follow the prompts within the application. And I know I can hear you right now because I did the same thing, but I already did and it didn't get me anywhere. For right now, just keep following that prompt. Like I said, the update could not be announced. There are reasons for that. There was a known effect that it was going to lock some people out. We were an unfortunate side effect. There's always going to be a side effect, but that side effect was made significantly larger by some initial um, code issues with the update that rolled out. Those are being worked through and we just have to take it from here. So let's talk about what is going on at all, right? Because I, I do see online, I even see people telling me this, you know, it sounds like a bunch of excuses. So let's walk through what's really going on. When you hear Package Portal talking about scammers, I understand the optics because this is one of the reasons I requested the meeting or requested to be part of a meeting is you hear scammers and you think, yeah, right, but that can't be that bad of a problem, can it? This isn't just scamming. I think if Package Portal were being a little bit more direct, like I'm going to be, they're directly facing people who are trying to defraud them and defraud us as people who are participating in the ecosystem. So this isn't just scamming, but that is a start, um, the start of how we could describe it. What's going on are bank style attacks. I mean, these are attacks that are typically reserved for your banks, your credit unions, your other financial institutions. People are utilizing sophisticated technological uh, mechanisms. I'm gonna be somewhat vague. I'm not gonna be extremely specific here. So these are bank style attacks, as I'm saying, and, and technology is being rapidly deployed, not only on package portal side to try to fight the scammers, but also technology is being rapidly deployed by the scammers. And there's a technological war that's being waged. And I'm going to give you some of the motivations for that in just a moment. But 
I want to call out that this is fairly new territory. We've seen problems with startups before. We've seen attacks on financial institutions before. We've seen all of the inherent problems that can come with a, with the crypto space. But we're not very far down the path in terms of humanity, especially, but in terms of business startups, in terms of anything like this, to where we have a really available tool set on how to manage and mitigate these types of problems from day one. So it's really easy to look, and I think I've done my fair share of this as well. It's really easy to look and say, yeah, you probably should have been aware of this. But the more details that I get, and I certainly don't know everything, but the more details that I get, the more I realize <laughs> how in the world are you going to predict for an attack from an industry that's not even something that's normally in your space, right? All of these uh, problems make the situation a little bit more complex than it seems. I do want to give you a technical walkthrough of what's going on that answers when you're likely to get your port. But first, let me issue a few more details specifically about the motivations. One of the motivations that a scammer would have is, of course, to capitalize on the price spike that they saw. I very, I very much believe that nobody saw a 100x coming in the time that it did. When you're at $100 per scan, there was a, a peak of like 115 something like that. Of course, we're not at that level right now for all the reasons we're talking about, for all the reasons that this video is being made. But at $115, a few scans in a developing nation is several months worth of salary. So there is the basis for light scamming, people wanting to you know skirt the system a little bit. That's honestly, as I just described, not the problem. This is systematic organized sometimes it's just individuals with their own organization meaning their own organized tool sets but specific and organized criminals that are attacking through very complex attack vectors to try to get access to the value that's that's represented in this price spike one thing that i think is really being missed by a lot of folks who are calling this whole thing um, trying to call it a scam or saying that it's a set or the other the thing they're really missing is that port isn't and never has been paying you directly anything for a scan the tokenomics of it is is they were issuing a utility token they were soft pegging that to a one dollar valuation one dollar let's talk about why for a moment because then people say well they were effectively paying us for a scan the reason is is because that is legally required in the united states not paying you for a scan but I mean, we in the United States cannot issue a token and say, look, we're going to set an initial price for this token and we expect it to go up and you'll make money. We can't do that over here. Can the price go up? Yes. Can you make money off of it? Absolutely. But our tokenomics are different than the rest of the world. And what Package Portal launching in the United States had to do is say, we have to figure out what we're going to redeem this for. And they chose a dollar for simplicity because it fit with the price model. They were never coming along and saying, let's let's pump this up to a hundred dollars. Nobody, including Package Portal, saw a 100 X coming. Trust me, I've talked to the people who bought in and preempted my own move on this. They didn't see a 100 X coming. And understanding those tokenomics is very key here. Understanding that Package Portal went in with a one dollar soft peg. It was individual investors who eliminated, who bought up all of that soft peg account and then entered into price discovery mode. That's why we were getting $100 per scan, $60 per scan now, whatever the case is. Package Portal never, this is not the model at all to say, hey, get 20, 50, 60, 100, whatever dollars per scan. For the folks who are saying that's uh, unsustainable, obviously, <laughs> that's not the value of the port token. And so it's really hard to get some of these points across when people are in the space giving opinions on something they haven't researched. But then again, we've seen that quite a, few, uh, a bit recently with ZRC2 tokens. But before I move on, I, I want to make that point extremely clear. Package Portal is issuing a token. Soft pegged to a dollar initially. You can read it in the original white paper. There have been modifications now with the governance vote. But you can read in the initial white paper, 
and then you would see why the initial governance vote was necessary, that it was soft pegged to a dollar and at some point that would expire. If you're missing the market dynamics, that it was investors coming in that saw the value of port as a governance token as described in that original white paper. If you're missing that point, you're missing the point that Package Portal was never paying anybody except for utility tokens. That's their model. Ask yourself this for those that are even pointing fingers at me for overcovering this or saying I'm a shill or blaming, you know, Package Port for letting the price. Ask yourself this. Why would these multi-million dollar investors that moved in, why would they be so comfortable giving you? 60, 80, a hundred dollars in order for you to relinquish that one port to them. What are you missing? (laughs) Right? I don't do price. I don't chill. I am not ever going down that path. I don't need to be in the space for that. But for those pointing the fingers, I really want you to challenge yourself right now. What are you missing? That multi-million dollar investors that had nothing to do with Port Prior would come in and be comfortable letting those prices sit around the $100, $115, $80, $60 mark as long as they have. What's the value of that Port token that you're missing if you think it's just simply compensating you for a scan? But I digress. That's a little bit of a sore point because fingers are being pointed at me from folks who haven't even bothered to look at the uh, the white paper in the first place. So the secondary play that the, the scammers are going after is to accumulate port, right? And that's the reason I let myself go on that tangent just a moment ago is because it explains this. Why would somebody, if you're not going to be able to access the price spike and if you're going to bring the price down and if it's going to float downward on the market and have... Um, all of the issues we've seen over the past few days with with port being bl- uh, backed up or really past few weeks with port being backed up, price volatility. If you're a scammer, why then would you want to accumulate port? You have to see back to that little rant I just did of what are you missing if you're not understanding why multi-million dollar investors came in and started buying this up and eliminating the soft peg so much so that we effectively at one point had again 100 x what is that reason? The scammers, of course, see that same reason, and they're deploying very, sp- uh, very, very sophisticated tactics in order to try to get and hold on to as much of that port as possible. So there are two angles here. One is to capture the port and release it for U.S. dollar. The other is to capture the port in a longer in a longer play. And of course, third, there is the instance to where some of these uh, scammers, they want to create instability for those two reasons, right? For the two initial reasons of capitalizing on the price and accumulating port for long-term purposes. So in order to, you you can do an instability play in order to benefit yourself in either one of those two. There are probably a multitude of, of combinations at play here. So I don't want to leave it with just that. And effectively this, this last one of, you know, creating instability, what it's ultimately done is, we're effectively seeing a DDoS attack or distributed denial of service attack against port. Was that the intent? Probably not, unless somebody was really going after the instability part. And again, I'm going to leave it for you. You've, you've got to be able to connect the dots between how instability would impact the, the first two bullet points over there. But this is effectively where we're at right now. So what does this do? Thank you for your patience of letting me get through all of that. But what does it do to answer the question, when do I get my port? Let's take a look at the process. You have a phone. Man, I miss Windows Phone. Those were the best. <laughs> I love those. You have a phone and you have the Package Portal application. You download it. You start scanning. You you do all of that. Well, what Package Portal does then is basically connects to a server on their own end in the back end. And this is the validator. This is where all of your port goes to be validated to assure you're a real person with a real barcode, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And from that point, that's when, you know, once your scan has passed the validator, which is, look, there's no secret. It's a blind process right now for most of us. It's aggravating. It's annoying. Package Portal knows that. They're frustrated with it, too. We're frustrated with everybody gets that. Developments are coming. The validator then effectively sends the scan out to the seed node 
uh, which was implemented before, so that the, the port and now export can be broadcast out. The trouble is, if you were to, say, outpace the number of scans coming into the system in order to DDoS, in order to try to gain a whole bunch of port, especially from the scammers who may not have necessarily looked at the tokenization and think there's some massive supply of these things, whatever the reason that got us here, I can tell you that those scammers are sending much more volume than one validator can handle on any given day right now. Obviously, right? Obviously, otherwise there wouldn't be a backlog. So what's happening with Package Portal, and one of the reasons that the app update couldn't have been announced, is one of its features enables this. It enables where Package Portal, receiving and triaging those scans, can then access multiple validator nodes, multiple servers that are then validating. Now, if you take a look at my screen over there and you realize I did not draw lines from those validators to the Zillica seed node, there's a reason for that. This is sort of where we're at right now. There's back-end development work that it, it's just like anything in the cloud, right? You can't just snap your fingers and instantiate a whole bunch of servers and have a magically work with the whole setup. Yes, we can snap our fingers and instantiate a bunch of servers, but the rest of that sentence also exists. They have to be integrated into the existing framework, know how to work within the system, and essentially be developed in through software as a part of the stack. And so this right here with the, the joining of those additional servers to the seed node, this is the work that's happening right now. But remember, there's a significant backlog and scammers are currently DDoSing to the point to where the one existing validator cannot keep up, effectively growing that backlog every single moment for all intents and purposes. One thing that would help here is to also understand that it's not just that the validators send directly to the seed node. Otherwise, there, there wouldn't be a backlog, right? There is an element that stores all of these things, all of the transactions that have been validated and are ready to go out. And this is where we're at. There is a significant number in that queue as well. There is a very good reason to not simply blast all of them out right now. And so these are being released at a measured pace. There are interruptions in that. For those of you who are watching ViewBlock and you're seeing, you know, you're seeing that burr, as, as Package Portal likes to say, that burr machine stops burring for a while. There are reasons for that. Um, uh, again, one, I'm not 100% super clear on all the details, but two, the details that have been relayed to me, it does make perfect sense and there is a need for that very solidly. So what happens is as these additional validator nodes are implemented and are executed and are put into the system, and this is going to happen in a matter of days to weeks, right? As that happens, this process begins to clear up. More packages can be validated properly. They can enter that backlog, as we're saying, and those can be queued for distribution. At the point that this development and integration is all pretty much streamlined, then we're going to be able to see that seed node be able to spit these um, actions out a little bit faster. There was some issuance of export, to the best of my understanding, to at least get something out to people to say, look, we know you're in this validator queue. We can't send you the port right now for all the reasons I'm describing here. We know, we see you, and even while export issuance is tied up in a, in a similar way, it's much less um, it's much less detrimental if a few export ends up in the hands of a scammer than if port itself being the governance token. So when port? Well, now we know a little bit more. Security updates are in place. Of course, more security updates are coming, having to practically lock down almost like a bank or credit union would. But at the same time, internal development work will enable the processing, much faster processing of validation, sending it to the queue and ultimately out through the seed node. Look, we knew, we knew going into this, we were told when this problem began, when the scams began, we were told that it was going to take months to clear that entire backlog. Very clearly, very transparently. I think the communication issue has been when we hear someone say the fire hose is on or the burring machine is burring, we may start getting the idea that the backlog is going to clear out that we're in the final push. Let me be clear. 
after the information I have now. Because I was susceptible to that. That's what I thought as well. The information and the questions that I have asked and received very transparent answers to. I don't believe there's going to be one event that clears the backlog. This is going to remain a slow trickle, but it will be cleared. It will be cleared, and I, again, I can't give you a specific time frame because there is not one. There's only a rough time frame, and, and B, for the same reason as, you know, you don't announce your plans for certain reasons, it's because some of the steps that are being executed and implemented are to thwart future problems. Package Portal is very aware that this needs to be resolved by the time paying customers start to be onboarded. Uh, Package Portal is building a, a sales and marketing team. There is work being actively done in that area. So I can say with you know confidence, we, we know there's demand. We know um, based on the preliminary channels uh, that are there that there is demand. And everybody, everybody out there knows that this problem has to be resolved before they're onboarded in any significant way. And this is not Package Portal, this is me. I fully expect some of that onboarding to start by early summer. 